Welcome back to another episode of Exploring Whiskeys. I'm Eric. I'm Kevin, and this is High West's American Prairie. We've already done at least one High West. Mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure that we've only done the one, the Mid Midwinter's Night Dram. From no, Tommy. Midwinter Night's Dram from Tommy. Yep. Yes. So that is already done. This is their bourbon release. They have a lot of rise. I think a lot of theirs are rise. Mm -hmm. They have some double rise, smoked rise. They have a lot of different whiskeys. This is the only, a Burai, I think, is theirs too, right? I think they have a Burai. This is one of their main bourbons. So this particular bottle, the cool part is, so you got the pronghorn here. Mm -hmm. This is all of, and the American Prairie is a foundation that they support. So yep. every sale does go to get some donation. 10%. 10%. To, that's it? 10% goes back. Yeah, to the American Prairie Reserve uh, to for where the pronghorns, pronghorns are, yeah, they're and crazy. This one is Utah, correct? Yes, this is the one that's Utah-based. I want to say near Salt Lake. Salt Lake. Yep. Yep. Here we Yes. Park City. Wow, Park City, Utah. How about that? It's actually on the bottle. Outside of that, they do distill... A little bit. But not this. Uh, yeah, they do some distilling of themselves for on for their own uh, distillations and whiskeys yeah. and things like that. Mainly blenders. They mainly yeah. source from MGP and blend some things around. Actually, this one is even crazier. So it is MGP. They say that it's from MGP. It is also from other places. The MGP that they're sourcing... 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley. And then they source another one that's 84% corn. That's, that's a lot of corn. A lot of corn. 8% rye, 8% malted barley. And then there's other whiskey components from undisclosed because of contractual, I, who knows. So sweet on the front, the rye burn, spice on the back. That'd be my guess. All I remember is sweet, sweet, sweet. That's okay. really what I remember. I remember this being a, a super rye, dessert. Though. But I don't know how much of each whiskey makes up that blend. That's the other thing. About it is 92 about proof. To find out. It is 92 proof, um, which is so mm -hmm. solid, but not crazy. And a decent price, 30 bucks. Yeah. That is, that's going to be one of the things I, I go for right here. This is a $30 whiskey. <laughs> and even on their website where they say best enjoyed as a cocktail. It's what their website says. Can enjoy it neat. Best enjoyed as a cocktail. As a mixer? That's what they're saying. They're calling this a mixer. Huh. Well. I would never put that on a website. <laughs> it's weird. It's a little weird to put that up. They're, saying, they're like, oh, it's fine. But Maybe it, like early times. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bury that in Coke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. I get a little more... I'm getting more spice. Rye notes, yeah. yeah. Like the... A little I was spice. expecting sweet corn. Yeah. Oh, that's all I remember on the, mostly the palate is what I'm thinking is the sweetness. I get a little rye spice, a little, uh, the dill notes, the uh, more rye heavy. There's more corn on the It's the palate, palate. that's super sweet, right? Okay. For I me, just, re that's all I remember me, is super sweet. I was expecting the other way around. I was expecting it more corn sweetness on the nose and more rye on the finish. You know, the rye kind of I'm getting the rye. <laughs> it's not aggressive rye. Not um, as aggressive as the nose. No, no. The nose is way more rye forward. The the but the palate, there are sweet notes there. There's a little bit of a spice. The dill is so aggressive <laughs> now. <laughs> as soon as I put that in my own brain, that's what I get. I still get the the rye note. It's yeah, not, it's spice. not as it's not as Strong. It's not aggressive. Not as aggressive as yeah. the first, before I took a taste. But it's still there. Yeah. A little more muted. Yeah. Um, so High West uh, started by Dave 
Perkins in 2010s, early 2010s, something along those lines. Started putting together a bunch of different whiskeys. He was a chemist by training. So he's a blender. It's really what he wanted to do. So that's what they did. A lot of their stuff was blending, sourcing, all that kind of stuff. They did start, they made their own distillery. They mm -hmm. are making their own, you know, their own distillations as well. They still source a lot of the whiskey that they're blending into all of their I think different... you got to at this point. If that's what... Yeah, I mean, if you want to build up national distribution, you almost... I don't know how you distill at a level that you can just distribute nationally without sourcing. I just... you got to be huge. Like, look at the size of Buffalo Trace or some of those other distilleries. Mm -hmm. Like, they're huge. How do you become that in... 10 years I did without buy sourcing. I Riff over the weekend. They're, yeah. they're already adding on to their, yeah. their distillery. Yeah. And they're kind of small operation to begin with. Yeah, too, they're, they're and they're only playing in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee. Like, they're very limited distribution. They're not nationwide. They're, they're adding on. They, yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. You have to. It's almost like, all right, control four states, get, get good production, all right, grow your facility. Now, you know, go out to a dozen more states. But I think a lot of those places right now are, they're going to strike while it's hot. Absolutely. Whiskey is super hot right yeah. now. Everybody's doing some kind of whiskey, cocktails, whiskey. It's kind of like the seltzer market. Everybody and their brother. Yes, everybody's making a freaking seltzer so now, right now. I mean, whiskey, I mean, whiskey's the same. I mean, yeah. Uh, for 30 bucks, this is, this is pretty decent. And the rye notes actually make me think it could make a good cocktail. Hey, Manhattan. That's a solid Manhattan. It's got some really good sweet notes mm -hmm. and a, a little bit of a spicy note in there. Yep. That'd be fine. There's nothing wrong with that as a Manhattan With a, if you don't like super aggressive spicy rye. <laughs> like just pure rye, which would normally be a Manhattan. The traditional MGP rye? Yeah. yeah it's not 95.5. <laughs> this is neither one of our favorites. Man, the dill is so strong on the nose. But I don't get it that it's not apparent on the palate to me. Ooh, now I go back to it. Yeah, it's back now. Stronger. All right. I would like to try this. You down? Yeah. Why not? I'm thinking, I mean, it's not a high, high proof. So we'll limit the drippies. But... 92. Why not? We can proof that down just a touch. Well, not as sharp. Yeah, the nose really muted down. Yeah, like really soft. Not like the dill notes kind of everything muted down. All I smell is sweeter notes on the nose now. Oof, now I get more rye. I get more rye on the finish. I get a sweet up front. Yep. And then the spice does start to like come in, but it's not like crazy aggressive. It's just rye spice finish. Really does start to come in towards sweet the end of that rye. But now I'm back to the vanilla. Vanilla sweet. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but before the water, I really didn't get the rye on the taste. But now I do, on the palate, I should say. Just on the nose. Now I get it both. <laughs> Where you go, water? So we're going to recommend maybe not water. Well, no. It's not, it, that, it but it changes it. Depends on your profile. Yeah, what do, you, what do you like? I like the fact that the dill one. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the smell of dill. I don't know why. <laughs> I like that. The, yeah, that's. So I like that the nose just smells like a really sweet rye. Mm -hmm. Is what it comes off as, even though this is technically a bourbon. Really comes off as a really sweet rye. Is what it comes off on the nose. And then the palate is sweet, spice. Sweet. And then like the sweet and spice is the kind of what finishes out. Like, and it get like warmth coming right down the middle. For 92 proof, that's kind of impressive that I'm getting warmth off of this guy. Yeah, I was just expecting it to be a lot sweeter though. For some reason, that's what I remember is it being super, super sweet. But obviously, it always depends... I don't remember. No, I thought I had it neat, but I don't know what I had it before. 
compare, you know, like whatever you drink before is always going to impact what mm -hmm. you drink after. Uh, the other thing I find cool, and I, I assume, I mean, they're, they're doing this and it's not, but it's kind of really cool old timey look to the yep. bottle. Like the glass has bubbles in it. Of course, there's a seam, so I know it's not like old timey glass but no. whatever and a lot of like all the raised, the raised letters raised lettering on it and stuff like like they're putting a lot of the wood yeah real re, yeah, nice wood real looks like real cork so it's a really nice bottle so for 30 bucks a saloon back in utah back in the yeah day. yeah just grab that <laughs> You, you always get assessed with, like, grabbing the cork with your teeth. I don't know what that is. <laughs> you ever watch Western movies? That the guys walk in, and it's just they grab the bottle, and they spit the, the cork out. Cork out, yeah. Doesn't I change think much. for the 30 it's bucks, it's, for 30 bucks. it's a good... It could go either way. You could drink this neat. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any problem with that. I think on a cube, the rye spices might mute just a touch and the sweetness probably does come up so maybe that's what i'm thinking of maybe i did have it on a cube or it could go the other way we added the water and we got more rye throughout that's true that is true 30 dollars for you mm -hmm. know a cocktail that's that's not a bad cocktail whiskey nope and apparently that's their recommendations <laughs> <laughs> but i've said it before i have a hard time using almost any bottle as a mixer but knowing that this is only thirty dollars, yeah. it's readily available. Right. Yep. Yeah, you can find mm -hmm. this particular one from High West is very easy to find. And so. other ones. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they have like three or four that are super easy to find. Then there's a handful of other ones that get more difficult and more expensive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll have to check this place out if I ever make it out that way. I'd be curious to See what's available for a flight. Never been to Utah, so I can't. I can no idea. Flown over it. Yeah. Never. Well, yeah. Drop down in it. Yeah. Exactly. So. Well. Solid bottle. Solid, especially for the money. Yeah, absolutely. And for us, I mean, we're like I said, we're pretty much guys that just drink it neat. But yeah. on occasion, we do like a Manhattan. So Every once in a while, a little cocktail. Never hurt or anybody. An old fashioned. Yeah. That'd be fine as an old fashioned too. Yeah. Trip number two to High West. That's right. So did you like this one better than? I had. That's hard because so I had hopes here. Yeah, well, everyone for the has for that for the midwinter's night for the price. Midwinter, but there's night's a lot drink. of hype around that bottle. Yeah, so I had hopes up here, but it is just finished dry, in theory. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting more of an impact, more just broader notes. So I, I mean, I was slightly more disappointed with that drink because i had such high hopes i'm gonna say that's probably a slightly better drink neat uh, i'm this one it's kind of nah, it's eh. you know what i mean like it's it's kind of very middle of the road middle of the, like nothing's too crazy remember, about I'm, it i'm enjoying this one better than the other one yeah yeah, I still might have the hype in my brain. That's funny. I don't know. Power suggestion. It, I mean, sometimes when you when you do right pricing and right marketing, mm -hmm. you just, you know, even if you're slightly disappointed, you still remember it as being better. We we appreciate you joining this review of the High West American Prairie. Yeah, we got we got more out of this lineup to go. Yeah, we do. I don't have don't have any bottles, but I'm sure we can. I find don't either. Pretty quickly, but we we can come across a few here. Yep. Uh, tomorrow, if we need to. If we yeah, if we need to. So well, we appreciate you joining this uh, this review. As always, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. While you're down there, if you're new, subscribe. Hit the bell icon. Let us know what your thoughts are of High West of this particular whiskey. Uh, I've had a couple other ones that I do like and I'm going to keep an eye out for. Uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, let your friends know about us. We're always looking for more more viewers, more Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Sure. If you have somebody that's interested in whiskey, whiskey share. Whiskey um, and listening. And listening to whiskey, listening to us talk about whatever. I don't know. <laughs> At this point. All right. Thanks for joining. <laughs> See you on the next episode. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.